No, I don't waste no time going on guys we are live in the AC scaling fast track community if anyone's watching live um, just let me know by leaving a comment not anticipating a lot of people to actually attend this live because it is obviously early um, bit of a spare of the moment off the cuff kind of video but to be fair, it is, it's one of them things where I do get a lot of questions about, um, it's obviously, you know, scaling the agency, you know, what do we need to do? Um, at what point can you actually start scaling the agency and so on and so forth? So I just thought I would um, hop on this live here quickly, just give you guys five, I say five, I put five with the title, it might be six, it might be seven, it might be four, I don't know. Um, just a few tips on scaling your agency and what you can basically set up or what you need to set up before you actually do so. So for those of you that actually do make it to the live, feel free to comment live in the comments below. If not, and you're watching this on the replay, also replay, uh, comment replay in the comments below. And if after watching this live, you have any questions regarding scaling your agency, your offer, um, you know, pricing a high ticket, so on and so forth, um, just message me on Facebook. You know, I'm, I'm almost always available on Facebook Messenger. So feel free to just send me a quick message there. But anyway, without rambling on too much, first thing you guys need to make sure that you sort is your traffic source. So when you're doing outreach, you need to basically make sure that you are first of all reaching out to enough people, but that you're also reaching out to you know the, the right person or the right amount of people because there's no point in just reaching out to as many people as possible if your offer's not proper, um, if, you know, you're, like I said, you're speaking to the wrong people. And one example that I always give to just sort of bring this home is the example of the high street. So the high street is, you know, obviously like the main shopping street in a lot of big cities and a lot of big areas. Um, and if you just walk down the high street and you're just like, hey, hey, over here, no one's going to listen or no one's going to come to you, right? Like, chances are a few people will give you a bit, bit of a weird look, like, who's this crazy guy in the high street? Um, but other than that, no one's really going to take any notice. Whereas if you are a, a lot more specific and say, hey, John, over here, you know, okay, you might not speak to everyone, but that person that is called John will actually come or, you know, there's a very big chance that that person that is called John will actually, you know, look up and come to you and say, hey, you know, did you, did you call me, you know, what, what can I do for you? And the same goes for outreach. You know, you need to be very, very specific when it comes to picking a niche and the offer that you are, you know, providing in terms of a product market fit, okay? So rather than just saying, hey, we help businesses grow their businesses uh, by leveraging social media marketing or something like that, go way more specific. And for example, with us, with our agency, we help meal prep and meal delivery services that are on Shopify doing 20K a month or more scale their business to 50K on average a month with Facebook advertising. So that is much more specific than just saying, oh, we help businesses grow, right? So don't be the crazy guy in the high street. Actually go very, very specific in terms of your traffic and in terms of your audience. So basically niche down as much as you possibly can because that is where the money lies, right? Like, um, there's an example on, on Facebook, I read it in the comments below, um, like one, one of the posts on Facebook, it was something like, if you offer email marketing, you can charge $19 for it. If you offer email marketing to um, SaaS owners, you can charge like $79 for it. If you charge email marketing to SaaS owners that are in X niche, you can charge more for it. And the more specific you go, the longer your title is, the more specific you are, the more you can charge for it because it's a very, very specific and tailored service that you are offering, okay? So don't be the crazy guy in the high street. Then tip number two is all about nurturing, okay? You need to basically create trust and authority within that niche that you are currently in, okay? So the first thing you do is pick the niche and the second thing you do is build an authority within that niche and nature the people that you speak to, okay? Not everyone is going to be a, a customer or a lead or a client right away, and that's okay. You know, what you need to sort of do is 
um, so have become that concerned friend, right? Just check in from time to time. Hey, how are you guys getting on? Hey, um, you know, the last time we spoke, you mentioned that you were trying X, Y, Z out. How is that going for you? Um, you know, would you like to touch base? Would you like to hop on a call? Like when we look at our clients now, some of the bigger clients, you know, we've actually been speaking to for like three, four months before they actually um, agreed to work together. Sometimes, you know, we'll speak to a very, very big company, a very big client, and we won't actually pitch our service. We'll just sort of get a feel for who they are, what they want, what they're offering, where they're currently at, where they want to you know, get to with their business, and then we'll give them some pointers. But if we notice that, you know, if we're going to offer our service right now, we're sort of forcing it on them, we deliberately will not do that until they specifically start asking us questions like, okay, how is it that you guys work? How does that go? Um, so sometimes, you know, there will be a, a, a moment where the call goes very well, but we won't actually offer our service. And then later down the line, we'll check in with them. Hey, you know, last time we spoke, you mentioned that you were looking into Google ads. How's that going? Um, you know, have you given Facebook ads any thought yet? You know, um, have you set this up X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. And that way, you'll, like I said, you'll nurture the leads. Much more people will be more interested in your service because not everyone is going to be at that right moment in time. You're not going to speak to that person at the right moment in time. Um, so, you know, once you start nurturing those leads, you'll notice that it's much easier um, to get clients on because they've already got that relationship with you. It's not like, oh, we speak to this, this person once, he pitches a service, and because we said, no, we've never heard, you know, never heard that person ever again, okay? So tip number one was don't be the crazy guy in the high street. Tip number two is be the concerned friend, okay? You know, make sure that you're constantly checking in with all your potential leads and your potential clients. Then, um, once you know you actually do start um, nurturing those leads, you start coming or an authority within your niche, you need to really learn to lead those conversations, right? You need to know what to say and what not to say, when to pitch and when not to pitch. And this will obviously come you know, with experience, but a lot of people that are you know, aspiring to become a successful agency, etc., that I speak to, they almost always offer their services prematurely. And you just need to think, you know, when you're on a, a date with a, uh, you know, a potential partner, you're not gonna ask them to marry you right on the first date, right? Same as with your service. You don't come in all guns blazing saying, okay, this is our service, this is what we've got to offer, this is how much it is. What you do is you wait for the right moment. And that, like I said, with that nature, and we sometimes don't actually pitch our services on call number one. We see, okay, where they're currently at, where they, you know, aspiring to go to. Does it make sense to pitch your service at this moment in time? Basically, what you're trying to do is you're trying to make it flow naturally rather than an actual sales pitch or a sales call. The best sales pitch or the best, um, you know, sales tactic is where you can almost get your client to start asking about your services and create the impression to your client or your potential client that they were the one that inquired about it. Almost like you were not trying to pitch, you were just trying to connect, and they were the ones that you know basically tried to get the conversation to carry on further. Okay, so know when to pitch, know at what time to give your price and so on and so forth. Don't give your price prematurely. Only ever give your price if they ask for it, okay? So again, like I said, don't be the crazy guy in the high street. Be the concerned friend, you know, always near to your leads. And then tip number three is don't marry on the first date, okay? Don't go go in all guns blazing, put your cards on the table at the very first time you speak to the uh, potential client, okay? And then tip number four is obviously when the time does arrive, when you do get to the point where you can mention your services, actually, you know, actually pitch it. Don't be afraid to say, oh, listen, you know, this is how much it costs or, um, you know, this is what we can do for you or we can help you with that. Okay, that is a great little transition uh, into, you know, the, the, the sales part of a call is, oh, we can definitely help you with that. Would you like to know more about it? And then if they say yes, like I said, they've initiated that. You haven't pitched them prematurely. They've said, yeah, we want to we hear more about it, you know, tell us more about it. Okay, so um, basically what I'm trying to say is a closed mouth doesn't get fed. You need to ask, you know, them to um, give you permission almost to tell uh, tell them more about it, okay? So tip number one, don't be the crazy guy in the high street. Tip number two, be the concerned friend. Tip number three, don't marry at the first date. And then tip number four, a closed mouth doesn't get fed. Try to think, now have we got a last tip for you guys to wrap it up with the five tips? Um, 
Well, but obviously, you know, the main thing is getting the results for the clients, right? So you need to make sure that once you do actually get the clients in, once you do actually, um, you know, get them through the door, they've signed the contract, is that you actually get them the results. And what you basically want to prevent is that once the client does sign with you, that the client never actually leaves you, okay? So keep that back door shut. It's much easier to keep a client than it is to acquire a new one. I just can, you know, here, we've done, we've gone through all these tips, right? You know, we're, we're, we're being very specific when we're reaching out to them. You know, we're really, you know, getting the conversation going, really building that relationship, we're really nurturing the lead. It'll be such a waste of time and effort on your part if at the end of all of that, they just leave after one month because the results weren't there, okay? So really, really make sure that you get them not only a return on ad spend, but a return on investment as well, okay? So for those of you that are, are you know, in the paid programs, obviously you've got the ROI calculator, etc. Um, but you know, for those of you that are not in our programs, just work out, okay, how much are they spending on the ad spend? How much is your retainer? What is their profit margin percentage? And then work out how much revenue you need to get them for them to actually get a profit of your service overall, okay? So you need to make sure that the bottom line for them, they're actually at a profit rather than at a loss with your service, okay? So to wrap everything up here, number one, don't be the crazy guy in the high street, okay? Be very specific and aim for quality traffic. Number two is be the concerned friend, okay? Nature your leads, build that trust and authority within your niche. Tip number three is don't marry at the first date. Know when to give your service and know when to pitch your offer. Number four, a closed mouth doesn't get fed. When you actually do get to a point where you know your clients are ready to hear your offer, make sure that you know you actually do give it because you know, like I said, a closed mouth doesn't get fed. If you don't ask, you're not gonna get. And then tip number five is keep that back door shut, okay? Once you put in all that time and effort to get the clients in, make sure that you get them good results and make sure that the service that you are offering is top notch, okay? So that's all I've got for, for now. Any questions, feel free to send me a message on Facebook or leave a comment down below. We will get back to you as soon as possible. And for now, I'm gonna wrap up this live here. Thank you so much for watching and tuning in and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.